Welcome back to the Circuit de Catalunya. It's day two of F1 pre-season testing. It's all wrapped up and it was Ferrari, Charles Leclerc, who finished the day quickest. The Ferrari hype train is coming in the distance and uh, lots of fans getting very, very excited about that. But there's been a more interesting phenomenon today that's been attracting the whole grid's attention. And to explain that, I'm joined by our technical expert, Jake Boxall-Leg. And Jake, what is porpoising? It's something that we've seen from most of the cars on the grid, actually, Luke. Uh, we've seen them bouncing up and down. Uh, if I had like a space hopper or something, I could show you visually what porpoising is. That'd be a great video. Yeah, honest. exactly. Yeah. Uh, imagine a 10 minute version of that. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that because we're currently standing in a car park. So I'll try and do my best to explain. Uh, hopefully our video team will put some nice visual media on to help explain it as well. So what we've done, Luke, is we've seen a lot of these cars bouncing up and down on the straights. And this is a legacy of these brand new Grand Effect aerodynamics that we've got. They're sort of like faux Grand Effects in a sense, but they still use Venturi tunnels. And as they're driving along the straights, they're producing quite a lot of downforce. Um, and so the car's being pulled closer to the ground. That's generally what happens when velocity increases, we're getting more downforce. But the thing is with these new cars, with the new tires as well, the suspension is really, really stiff because when you're going through a very, very fast corner, you want to have all of that downforce and you don't want to have pitching and yawing in the middle of the corner. So by having very stiff suspension, you keep that downforce. And so in the high, uh, high speed corners, you can go a lot quicker. But unfortunately on the straight, that means that the whole car is pulled down. So there's no damping between the suspension and the rest of the car. Well, there's very little damping between them. And so the whole car is being pulled down. And what that's doing is when they're driving over the bumps on the start finish straight line or they're you know just you know driving along the car's being pulled down to the road and it's creating massive amounts of suction then it's creating a stall underneath and so there's not that downforce it there's that sudden loss of downforce and so the car pops back up again okay. and then and that's what creates the bouncing effect basically yeah exactly right. and it goes through that cycle so See. it goes down and then loses downforce and stalls and uh, and then pops back up again and it's happening you know in very very short time frames mm. but it's really really interesting to, to see it and see this problem that we've not really seen in formula one for a number of years and was this expected at all i mean obviously you've been looking at these regs for i guess a, a couple of years now as we've all been so excited for 2022 but was this ever something that came up as being a possible side effect of the return of ground effects I think Matteo Bonato said it best earlier that it wasn't really expected. And it's strange because you have all of this four, uh, four post, seven post rig testing. You have all the wind tunnel testing as well. You've got all of these great amount of tools that, that, that you can use to simulate everything. But there's no substitute for real world experience and they're experiencing it now. And they did have this a little bit in the 1980s when ground effects were a lot more primitive. Um, one of the cars, the Lotus 88 of the time, you know, the Lotuses before that, the Grand Effects were a little bit iffy, and even though they pioneered the design, they weren't very efficient and the cars were suffering with porpoising a lot back then and they created the Lotus 88 which had a very uh, softly sprung centre chassis and then the skirts and the parts of the car that were developing the Grand Effects, they were very, very stiffly sprung and so it was keeping that effect uh, relatively consistent while ensuring they weren't getting too much porpoising and so the drivers were comfortable as well which is uh, another issue of this porpoising matter. Definitely, I mean, there was an amazing um, video of Charles Leclerc's Ferrari coming down, uh, I think it was the main straight, and it was in slow-mo, and you can see his helmet moving around so much, it's bobbing up and down. And uh, yeah, you asked a couple of drivers, sort of, how was it? And uh, George Russell was very outspoken. He said, sort of, even from a, a safety level, it's something to bear in mind because it is so, so severe. But if teams wanted to remedy this porpoising, how would they do that? Uh, I don't know the answer. To that. Okay, so, I mean, is there anything in the setup or anything they could do? To sort of, would it be sort of raising the ride height? But then that would counter ground effects, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think what you can do is, in theory, like that as well. You could soften the suspension, but then you have that problem in the corners, and yeah. you're losing downforce because you're getting the pitch and the yaw and various other things. Uh, it could also be an aerodynamic issue as well. Um, you know, they're very, very clever people, a lot cleverer than me. And so I'm sure that they'll come up with ways to remedy the solution. Uh, I don't know the answer to that one. And I think at this stage, some of them don't know particularly the answer as well, uh, because obviously they've turned up and, and had this issue. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a very interesting situation. It is. And as you said, there's no substitute for real world testing. We've been through all the, I guess, the CFD and the wind tunnels and everything. But until you get it on track, you can't actually see what the new regs and what the new cars are going to be like. So, uh, yeah, it's been a really fascinating development, I think. And I think it could well be the story that dominates the first sort of few races in terms of the technical side, because teams, they've been so focused on these new cars and we know the rate of development is going to be really, really high. But surely this is a very fundamental thing that they all need to get on top of quite quickly. 
Well, certainly. Well, what they do have now is a focus for between now and the test in Bahrain, the Formula One official test in Bahrain. Nice. And so I think that's something that they're going to work towards there. You know, I'm sure they're putting hours in the factory already as we speak, uh, testing and seeing what works and what doesn't. They might even, you know, potentially try and implement some solutions for tomorrow. Let's uh, see how see how it happens. But obviously, if some teams don't get it right in Bahrain, um, you know, the first few races, yeah, for sure, um, it's, it's going to be a real problem. Uh, Bahrain, probably OK in terms of, uh, you know, there's lots of runoff and that kind of mm. thing. But when you're getting this porpoising in, in Jeddah, it's going to be a bit yeah, a bit wow. of a terrifying yeah, experience. That's a very so, good point. I've not thought so of. So hopefully they're able to get it right. Um, yeah, the drivers found it very, very uncomfortable. So. Um, that's not particularly good for them as well. So hopefully they get it sorted. Yeah, I think it's going to definitely be a story to follow. Obviously, Jake will have all of the technical insight uh, looking at that story as it does develop. Uh, thank you for joining me. Very proud you got through that without a, a porpoise pun of some sort. Are you, are you feeling okay <laughs> today? Or is there anything you want to get out of your system? I, I refrained. I refrained. Okay, not lost I your did sense it on of porpoise. porpoise. Hey, there we go. There we go. We knew it would come at some point. Uh, thank you, Jake. And uh, yeah, be sure to stay tuned to Autosport. We'll obviously have all of the analysis uh, from the final day of testing, uh, which is tomorrow. And uh, yeah, see if Ferrari can continue to lead the way at Circuit to Catalonia. Yeah.